Hello, everybody, and welcome to Locked On Astros. We have a special edition tonight. We're going to talk to Jackson Ryan, grandson of Nolan Ryan, about the new movie coming out, the blockbuster, Facing Nolan. That's right. This is a blockbuster film that's going to be limited release on the 24th this month, and if you get a chance to see it, please go see it. It is a legendary tale about a legendary pitcher who spent a lot of time in Houston, a big part of Houston Astros folklore and Major League Baseball folklore. So sit back and enjoy this excellent interview with Jackson Ryan. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Astros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can we find you at? Thank you for having me at H-Town Wheelhouse on Twitter and Instagram and at Stros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive. We love Nolan Ryan here. Always Stros. All right. Thank you for making Locked On Astros podcast your first listen every day. And uh, keep on subscribing to us on YouTube. Keep on uh, liking us and keep on making us your first listen on your way to work, on your way home for work, on o- Odyssey, Apple, Spotify, wherever you listen. And we got an awesome guest today. We have Jackson Ryan. He is the grandson of the legendary Nolan Ryan. And uh, he is the only reason why I have anything Rangers in my house, uh, the Astros shrine I have, he's the only, uh, known Ryan is the only reason why I have anything here. So, uh, Jackson, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Thank you all for having me on the show. I appreciate it. All right. So today's episode is brought to you by bet online. Bet online is the best place to get anything you need to, uh, to make a bet. Bet online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before bet online where the game starts. So uh, let's go ahead and, and talk about how cool it is. I know we did this with uh, when we had your father on. We said, how cool is it to have your father be Nolan Ryan? So how cool is it to have your grandpa be Nolan Ryan, the, um, the, the Ryan Express, and just everything that went into being the grandson of Nolan Ryan? No, it's very cool and very special. I've been very blessed to say the least being having my grandfather's Nolan Ryan and my dad being Reed Ryan. They've shown me not just the baseball aspect of it in life, but also how to treat people, how to be respectful, how to do things the right way. So that stuff to me is more important than the actual baseball stuff that I've learned from them. And that's what a lot of people focus on, like us, when we commentate on baseball. And that's really all we talk about. And that's what we do here at Locked on Astros. And there is a human element. And that's what we've seen. Um, And I'm going to kind of tie this into what you're doing. We've actually interviewed recently several minor leaguers in the Astros organization. Um, Alex McKenna, Joe Record, uh, you know, Jonathan Sprinkle, Joe Perez. Um, Jordan Brewer, to name a few, and you are actually working as an intern in the Kansas City Royals minor league organization. Is this something that you've always wanted to do um, since since you've grown up as just working baseball? Yes, it's been very passionate of what I want to do in life. Um, I've been very fortunate back in 2020. uh, I know one of their assistant GMs pretty well and Gene Watson. He had me come over before the season started and sit in on pro scouting meetings. So I'm an intern with their pro scouting department right now. I'm actually in Amarillo, just got done seeing a double A series up here. And so I I basically just go around to different ballparks and look at certain players and write reports. And I've been very blessed to say the least to be under a great organization from Mr. Sherman to Dayton, to JJ, to Scott, to Gene, uh, to Pedro. So I've been very fortunate to say the least to be with it. Kansas City Royals organization and a first class organization through and through. So I know you're doing a lot of reports on the minor leagues. Are there are there any like um, Royals prospects we should be keeping an eye out on? Well, obviously you have Bobby Wood Jr., um, number two, two overall pick a couple <laughs> years ago. You obviously got MJ Melendez, um, Vinny Pascantino is down in AAA, as well as Nick Prado, just to name a few. So right. it's uh, been very cool to see and very special. We're very young organization and you want to build that core and go all the way through 
So let's get talking about this film. You know, that is awesome. I know you're doing things that a lot of people watching the show or listening are like, man, I wish I could do that. I mean, just 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 to be a fly on the wall, literally listening to those conversations with drafting and prospects, it ha- has got to be neat. But this movie, Facing Nolan, Facing Nolan was a was a tall task for many hitters. Um, we talk often um, in baseball circles today when you see players dig in, you know, we're like, ah, you know, if Nolan Ryan was pitching, you didn't necessarily dig in like that was his plate. And, you know, he made his presence known on the mound. He was very intimidating. When this movie was talked about being made, was there apprehensions or were there a lot of questions that came from your family, from from your grandfather? Because you always want to make sure that the portrayal is a good portrayal and an accurate one. Yeah, I don't know too much about the inside of it because that was my dad and my uncle and my grandmother really pushing my grandfather to do this documentary because probably as my dad has said in the past, my grandfather really didn't want to do one before. And my grandmother was a very big influence in making this possible. What this movie is going to show is the, the side that most people don't know about Nolan Ryan, as well as how much of a love story it is between my grandmother and my grandfather. And to be honest with you, I think this is more of a story about my grandmother than it is my grandfather actually with facing Nolan. Wow. That's interesting. I mean, you think it's mostly about the hitters and from hitters point of view, but you're saying it's more of the personal side of Nolan Ryan. So that's interesting. That makes me want to go watch it. So, I mean, I, I want to see what George Brett and some of those people have to say about facing a Nolan Ryan, but uh, that's got me a little bit intrigued about that. So uh, have you seen it? Yes, I have seen it. We've had different showings. We had one up with the Rangers ballpark um, for the st- stadium tour premiere. And then we had one over at Dell Diamond as well. Our AAA team that we own, um, AAA of the Texas Rangers now. So we did that on May 14th. Yeah, and you know, speaking of AAA, that is where back in 2019, my son and I actually had the honor of meeting you when we were interviewing. I believe it was Josh Rojas, Brandon Belak, and and um and Colin McKee. It was before Josh Rojas got traded to the um to the you know to the Arizona Diamondbacks for Zach Grinke. Um, and I remember meeting you there, and I just I I just want to tell people out there, if you ever meet Jackson, he is he is truly is a product of his environment. Um, I remember you gave my son a baseball. Um, he hadn't had one yet. And he was like, Hey man, here's a ball. And, th- and that was neat. And, and my son was like, who is this? And I explained to him who your grandfather was. And so you could tell right away that, that these, that these family values, that these, the way you treat people was, was, you know, really, really handed down. Now, a lot of people talk about, like I said earlier, the intimidating factor of, of your grandfather, we, with your grandfather being as tall as he is, right, being kind of just, I mean, he's just an awesome presence whenever he's in any room. What was he like with you guys growing up? Was he kind of like he's grandpa and he was like the soft teddy bear or he was intimidating? What was that like? He was very supportive of what we were doing. Um, for instance, my sister, he'd always come to her um, final four games, state championship games in basketball in Waco. Um, he'd come out to see me pitch. He saw me pitch at UMHB my freshman year, um, my one outing out in college. So he was very supportive of what we were doing, and he's very caring and loving as well. Yeah, I'm looking at Rotten Tomatoes, um, and one of their comments is, uh, it's actually a good comment. It says, a film dedicated to Ryan's achievement as a pitcher with a look at a love of the families uh, to fill in um, oh, I don't know if that's a compliment, but I just it just kind of talked about um, the family side of things. And so that's kind of what you're talking about. But a lot of them just says that it's a um, it's a baseball documentary of a nice guy and a great legendary pitcher. And it's a, if you're a baseball fan, it's a great movie to go look at. Uh, what was your favorite scene overall? Uh, something that maybe not necessarily just for you, but something that maybe you and your family talked about afterwards? Well, there's multiple scenes, but I think what's interesting is people don't know before the Robin Ventura fight that Dave Winfield charged the mound when he was in Houston. And so you kind of find that part of it as well. Actually, 10 years, I think it was seven to 10 years. I can't remember to the date um, that Robin Ventura charged the mound as well in Arlington. So kind of interesting to see 
how he didn't protect himself, meaning my grandfather, when Dave Winfield charged when he was with San Diego <laughs> against Houston. And then, well, he's... you know, seven to 10 years later, that in- incident ends up happening. And that's something that I found very interesting, to say the least. You know, and the running joke that I share a lot, as I say, the only person to get six hits off of Nolan Ryan in one game is Rob Ventura. One, two, three. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, that was a moment. And, you know, that picture with the blood streaming down his face and, you know, staying just that was that was just the the grit. This this kid born in Refurio, Texas, grow, you know, he grows up in Alvin. Um he eventually makes his way to Houston. Then he becomes a Texas Ranger. Just everything in his career where I think really culminated into the crest of the way for Nolan Ryan seemed to always happen in Texas, even though he was with the Angels, even though he was with the Mets. It seems like the Astros and the Rangers in those parts of his career really cut him out to the legend of Nolan Ryan because he sustained success over a long period of time. No, y- y'all would be right to say that. In the movie, it talks about my grandfather says that he is a Texan and he's proud to be a Texan, and it means something to be that. And so to see 80, to see 86 in Houston, and for my grandfather to be the first million dollar player, and they explain that, and then to see those teams go super far and be this close to the World Series, and then find out what happened with the Astros, and then for him to go to the Rangers and have 5,000 strikeouts and the seventh no hitter and all the accolades that came with that was very interesting and very special to say the least. All right. So uh, in a second, we're going to ask uh, Jackson about uh, Nolan Ryan's overall take on the movie. But before we do that, it seems like Robin Ventura uh, got a lot of building when he was uh, taking those punches. So let's talk about Built Bar a little bit. Yeah. So Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar on the land. They've got these brownie batter puffs. Uh, Jackson, I don't know if you've heard of these, but you might want to share them not only with your friends and family, but just maybe some of these minor leaguers, because if they love brownies, and if they love brownie batter, they're going to love these brownie batter puffs. And what it, I keep saying the word puff, what is that? I'm glad you asked. It is a protein-infused marshmallow puff wrapped in 100% chocolate. Now, this protein isn't just any protein. It's collagen protein. Why is that important? Because it allows your body to effectively absorb it and keep you moving through the day. Whether you're pre-workout, post-workout, during a game, whether you're on a long road trip to another town to play another team, Get Built Puff. It has 140 calories, 17 grams of protein, 7 grams of sugar, and the brownie batter puffs are the perfect pick-me-up. So these puffs are here for a limited time. Don't worry about the protein bars that you get. Don't worry about the 240 calorie candy bars because that's pointless. Go to Built.com and get your brownie batter puff now. Go to Built.com and use a promo code LOCK15. Get 15% off your order. Use a promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. And don't forget to check out the Lockdown Now podcast. They do a great job of putting together all the nows from every team, whether they win or lose. It's a great way to see what's going on around this great sport of baseball. So speaking of great sport of baseball, uh, I'm sure Nolan has uh, seen this. What was his big takeaway from the movie? Does um, he think it's an active, I mean, accurate portrayal? No, I would say so. He's very happy with how it ended up finishing as well as our producer and filmmaker being from Texas also helped in that regard because he wanted people to feel, you know, connected to him as well through, you know, being in Texas and all of that. But I'd say he's very happy with um, how it ended up being. It, and I think it's interesting that you say that, that um, his wife, Ruth and your dad and your uncle all encouraged him to do this. And it does sound like Nolan, from what I've heard from people that know him personally, people I've talked to, it doesn't surprise me that he's like, you know what, we don't really need to do this movie. Like your your grandfather to me just wore this, wore this, like he had this aura about him on the mound. He was a superstar, yes. He was one of the best pitchers of all time. But he was a down home guy. He, like you said, he was a Texan through and through. I remember growing up watching the "Don't Mess with Texas" commercials with Nolan Ryan in them, and I, I mean, just just everything about him was absolutely legendary. Um, I I got to watch him growing up 
in the Astrodome, watch him pitch. I mean, if you look back on some of those staffs when they had Scott, Ryan, and Nepper, oh my gosh, you want to talk about a one, two, three punch. And he was so close to so many more no hitters. I mean, he had like 20 or 23 one hitters, something, some amazing number. I don't even know the accurate number. But with with all that being said, um, what do you think he looks at in baseball as his greatest accomplishment? Is it the strikeouts? You know, like what is it about his career that he is most proud of? I actually don't know because we don't really talk about his career a whole lot. And he doesn't like to talk about his career. One of the things that I actually value most about him is that he's not about himself in that regard. So to answer your question, I'm not too sure. No, okay. I like that. That's no, that's, you know, and, and that brings me back to knowing that whenever major league baseball players are sitting around the fire in an off season, they're not talking about balls and strikes game strategy. They're talking about family. They're talking about hobbies. Um, you know, I know your dad is, is, is real fond of his dogs that he has. And, you know, Nolan, I know was kind of your down home country boy. Um, and just, you know, he had, he had, a large piece of land there in Alvin. And I remember someone actually drove me, drove me by his house when I worked there, um, you know, in a youth room. He's like, look, it's just, a, it's just a regular old house with a bunch of land. And, and he, he's just, he, he's just a regular guy. And you'd love to hear that about him. Yeah. I mean, that we're all regular human beings at the end of the day. And so it's about being the best person you can be every day, treat others the way you want to be treated and do what's right in the eyes of the Lord. And if you do those three things, you're going to be good to go. Well, I don't want to, I don't want to leak anything, but I'm reading an article in the Chicago Trib Tribune, but they have an interesting little post story about uh, something that the, uh, supposedly something happened um, after the whole uh, Robin Ventura and Nolan Ryan incident, that something would happen if, um, somebody charged the mound or something. So if you want to go see what happened there, you have to go watch the movie. Definitely. And uh, a lot, of, this is a very good um, a review of the movie overall. And they said it's a um, really good old fashioned documentary and it's, it's a really good job of doing it. And, and so far, nothing I've read is uh, really has a negative thing about this and who can say anything really bad what Nolan Ryan did. And uh, Brett, to answer your question, do you go home and say, you know what? Uh, I'm so, um, these kids really tick me off today. Like during the summer. Oh no. no yeah. No, so, I just, no, I just didn't know if that yeah. was because, and I guess I was more basing that off of the subject matter of the film being that yeah. maybe as they're taping, as they're recording, you know, yeah, they're know. interviewing him and others. Um, but you know, one of the things Jackson that I remember hearing him in a booth and I can't remember which game it was, but I remember <laughs> him talking about his conversation with Satchel Paige and he said him and Satchel Paige were talking and he was asking Satchel Paige, what is your favorite pitch? Like, what is your go-to pitch? Is it a, is it a breaking ball? Is it a fastball? And he said, it's called the bow tie. And he goes, what's the bow tie? He says, well, they get too close on the plate. You throw it right there, right below their chin where they feel like they're wearing a bow tie when that ball passes. And he goes, then they know who's in control. And I was like, yes. Like, I was like, that's the Nolan Ryan I thought he was, right, on the mound. Of course, persona and everything, intimidation, that's all part of the chess match of baseball. Um, but what would you say, let's say someone's watching this and they they never got to see your your grandfather pitch. Like, what are some places outside of this movie or things – like, are there books written about him? Are there certain games they should look up and watch? Like, if we want to take a deeper dive into Nolan, do you have any advice for us, like, where to look and, like, some resources like that? I mean, I guess it would be, like, YouTube and go look up, you know, the five or the 5,000 strikeout, the seventh no-hitter, the fifth no-hitter, um, his time with the Angels when he threw the fastest pitch time record uh, back in the day in the 70s. So, you know, I would guess there would be those areas, to be honest with you. So, you know, a funny story about the 5,000 strikeout, my father, so the Astros obviously were not a, oh, there we go. The Astros were not an interleague team. There, I mean, there was no interleague games back then, right? So we would have to go to Arlington if I wanted to see like Mark McGuire play or whatever when Nolan went up there. So my dad said, we're going to go see Nolan Ryan get his 5,000 strikeout. When he called the Rangers ticket booth, 
we went, we got tickets. They gave us tickets to the wrong game. We got to see Charlie Huff throw. <laughs> we were furious. We missed, we were there the day before Nolan threw it and we couldn't get a ticket for that game. So we were almost there. We were almost at that 5,000 strikeout. Um, but all these accomplishments and stuff, all this stuff happened bef- before you were born, correct? Yes, yes, way before I was born. Okay, okay. And yeah. and and so you so you growing up, like how did how did you learn about your grandfather? Did your did your dad talk about it? Did did you ask questions? How did you learn about just the legend of him? I think just being at the ballpark, to be honest, because when I was eight, well, we started the Express in two thousand, and then after that, my grandfather went to the Rangers from two thousand eight to two thousand twelve. Ended up being in two World Series there and got to see all of that when he was on the baseball side of things. And then my dad with the Astros after that. So I imagine it was just being at the ballpark every day and, and learning from that way. And then just finding a passion, you know, for the game of baseball as well. You're going to go look up certain players and look up things that they did. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask that, like, uh, what was your experience? But that that was perfectly uh, – you answered that uh, great, just being around him. Uh, we saw what Jeremy Pena hit the experience he got last year in the playoffs and how it helped him this year. So it sounds like that's kind of what you got, just being around your dad and your uh, grandfather. So um, it kind of led you to where you are now, working for the Royals. So uh, where do you see your future from here? I know you're doing this minor league thing with the Royals now. Do you, Where do you see yourself kind of going from here? I would like to try to be a GM someday. That would be the end goal. Um, obviously, there's steps that I have to take a ton of them. I've been very blessed, to say the least, to be in the pro scouting department for KC and learn as much as I can every day. So I just want to continue to grow, try to be in the game and try to work my way up someday if I can. Um, basically on the opposite side of what my dad did being on the business side. Um, you know, I want to be on the baseball side and I'm more passionate about what's on the field compared to what, you know, you need what's in the stands and that's very important, but my passion is what's on the field and trying to help deliver championships. Did you play? Uh, I played college baseball um, one year at UMHP, Mary Hart and Baylor, Division Three, in the American Southwest Conference. Okay. And and you and you also played um, at Second Baptist High School, I believe. Correct. Um, yes, I you, did. You guys showed up, so I I left there. Um, my family moved to Louisiana. You guys showed up, I think, the year after I left, and that's when Berkman came in, and then shortly after that, it was Pettit. And sometimes the baseball gods put me away from baseball players because I guess they think I'm going to bring an equipment bag and ask everybody for an autograph because I can't, because I tend to be a fanboy, you know, but, um, I remember hearing about you and I remember because I, I believe you had, um, you had miss, I believe you had miss Simonton as your senior Bible teacher, correct? Yes. I and did. she, um, I would always keep in touch with her and she would say, Oh my gosh, Jackson, he is, he is such a sweetheart. And so I said, you know, that, that whole family, um, is, is, is absolutely golden and everything I've heard about y'all. So, you know, major props, let your, let your grandfather know that, um, we still hold him in high regard, not just what he did on the field, but also off the field. Yeah, I appreciate it. You know, going back to second real quick, we had Lance Berkman, Andy Pettit, Rainer Noble. Rainer was at U of H for 20 years. So we would go to, you know, play at 5A and 6A public schools and at spring break and, You know, that was very fun to play for them as well. Yeah. I mean, uh, just what Nolan Ryan did, I don't think we'll ever see players, pitchers do what he did. In 1972, he had 20 complete games. 1973, he had 26 complete games. 1974, 26 complete games. Pitchers nowadays, they maybe get like three in a season, maybe. This year, maybe two. It just it, uh, complete games like Nolan Ryan is a dying breed. They don't have those type pitchers anymore. I mean, Justin Verlander may be one of those, but he's still, uh, he doesn't even pitch those complete games. Uh, those old school pitchers, what Nolan Ryan was, what's a central page, what a lot of those old school guys, um, that, that's when the pitchers were able to go deep in games. Now you're focusing on throwing harder, throwing it, uh, p- the, the, the what spin rate and everything. And so I don't know which one's better baseball. 
Uh, you'll have to answer that, Jackson. But uh, I don't know <laughs> if pitching more innings or pitching harder. Which one do you think is better in the long run? Man, it's just a different philosophy in today's game. Obviously, you still have Justin Verlander, Garrett Cole, um, to name a few that you know could throw complete games um, now. But it's just a different philosophy. We talk about it in the movie. My grandfather does about his mindset was to go out and pitch nine innings. And if he didn't do that, then he wasn't completely thrilled with what he did in that outing. So I think with today, with analytics and how they're doing different things within pitch, you know, pitchers philosophy as well as pitch count and how much rest the pitcher needs. Yes, there are advantages of that, but there's also advantages of the old school mindset. So I feel like you need to have both in today's game where you listen, you know, to what the player's saying and how he's feeling and stuff like that. But you can also use the analytics to your advantage as well. So let me ask you this. When when it comes to the analytics, when it comes to the way that pitchers, you know, like we talk about how the, how the game's changed, do you think sometimes the managing of pitchers is overcoached and overanalyzed? Maybe. I think it just depends on the situation. So, for instance, this is an obvious one back in 2020 when Blake Snell was in the sixth inning and was dominating L.A. in game six of the World Series, even though the Dodgers were coming up for the third time of the lineup. It was just interesting to see them yank him and then ended up losing that game. And it's easy to second-guess these managers, right, and what they're doing and what they're thinking. But I also think it's important to lean on the bench coach, the pitching coach, and lean on the pitcher and how he feels and then look with your eyes to see – you know, how that guy is throwing and what he's doing in the game as well at that point. What about so, removing Zach Grinke? To, or not to? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, yeah. You, you know, 2019 with the Astros. Yeah. I mean, there's there's all kinds of yeah. um, stuff. But, you know, Ryan, I, I want to thank you um, for myself and Eric. Um, I know our listeners are going to love listening to this. I appreciate you coming on, and I hope in the future we can have you on and maybe talk some prospects. Uh, maybe if the Astros and and Royals get into some kind of trade or something down the road, we can talk. You know, talk turkey. If you're ever in Sugarland, please hit us up. Let us know. Um, from the moment I met you in person to now, you you've always been gracious and kind, and we appreciate you you coming on the show. Is there is there anything you want to say to wrap the show up for us? Is there anyone you want to thank, you know, for where you are and what you're doing um, before we exit? Yeah, I guess the biggest thing I want to finish up with is go make sure that y'all see the movie Facing Nolan on May 24th. It's nat- it's nationwide in theaters. It's a one-day deal, and then after that, you know, we'll see where it goes from there. And, yeah, thank you guys for having me on. Yeah, thank Alrighty. you. All right, guys. Uh, thank you, Jackson, once again for coming on. I'm excited to go see it, and uh, that's awesome uh, just uh, to see um, – a different side of Nolan Ryan that a lot of us probably have not seen. So thank you for coming on and telling us um, uh, what, what it took to kind of make this movie and what to expect from this movie. And uh, guys locked on Astros uh, listeners go out and see it. Uh, It's only going to be there limited time. So go see it. So once again, Jackson, thank you for coming on and we are the locked on Astros podcast. Make sure you go um, subscribe to us on YouTube. Make sure you go ahead and make us your first listen every day, whether it's on your way to work, on your way home from work, just go and make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcasts, go and listen to locked on Astros. Go Strokes.